good afternoon all and welcome to the webinar hosted by numerical analytics instrument private limited so this is a series of webinar we were be, we were conducting throughout uh, the past 3 or 4 months for the students of ibdp and igcse so this is a part of that series only today uh, with us uh, uh, we have ms greta gomes she is hod of uh, mathematics stone hill international school she is also a tq trained uh, trainer uh, she is well versed with the technology of uh, texas instruments and today she will be taking the uh, taking you to the experience of transformation of functions using the tns by cx2 so over to you uh, greta uh, thank you hasan i hope i am audible yeah okay so i welcome all of you on board for this one hour of fun on transformations of functions uh, good afternoon to you revathi as well yeah so uh, to introduce you to functions and transformations of functions in particular you should already be aware of the basic functions right and once you are aware of the basic functions there are almost close to 11 basic functions if you would consider uh them in the following order as in linear quadratic cubic uh, reciprocal rational um trigonometric uh yeah a modulus and so on you can also have a combination of functions uh, uh those are called composite functions and uh, we then move on to transformations of functions okay so transformations of functions is understood by these uh, movements okay these small arrow keys uh, illustrate the same now a beautiful uh, document i found from ti illustrates to you okay the different kinds of functions here all right and i will ask hasan to share the document with you and if you have a look uh, this is what i found from the ti website itself okay it's called families of functions so you can see the very basic functions here that i was talking to you about the Uh, quadratic absolute value square root the reciprocal cubic cube root the uh, exponential right and when the exponent uh, lies between 0 and 1 if the base is uh, sorry when the base is uh, lies between 0 and 1 when the base is e uh, ln uh, x then you have the semicircle the greatest integer function and the generic piecewise function okay there are also step by step videos here which will take you through every process all right uh, to begin with let's just uh, play around with you know the base function so i had already done this before uh, wherein i had graphed y is equal to x square and then you know we uh, i i thought okay let me see the very basic movement of what happens to uh, y is equal to x square that is if i take a quadratic function and i move it two units up what happens and if i take a quadratic function the same blue function and i move it to uh, uh, three units down what happens so let's just try that uh, let's just try these basic uh, elements out so i encourage you to go to doc for one okay and go ahead and press graphs so if you want to go ahead and uh, put in your very basic function one among the many uh, 13 which i showed you on this slide right uh, here so uh, we are dealing with the basic that is the parent function okay so go ahead and plug that in so x square x here and square here and hit enter okay and then of course you can always do your plus or minus so hit tab to get the uh you know uh, the function uh key and then go ahead and press plus or minus accordingly so if you want to uh, hit let's say plus 1 and watch that movement you can see that happening or if you want to hit tab uh Okay, let me keep the base function as it is so that you can see uh, everything else on the same screen itself okay so go ahead and hit tab so f2 if you hit the up arrow key you will get f1 now you hit the down arrow key and call f1 you can either do this by calling f1x or you can type in the function again so you can try both ways let's try f1x you can see it's become bold now that means you're calling the function that was already set and then you might want to put in you know any constant here and you can see the transformation accordingly okay uh yeah so this was what i was talking about and this is the translation so basically any sliding or gliding movement across the screen uh, or across the coordinate plane as we call it gives you the 
transformation of this quadratic graph. Now, this is also summarized as uh, f of x plus a constant, right? And that I have done here. All right. So you can go ahead and create what we call as a slider for your function. And if you move the slider now, if I move the slider up or down, you can get everything in one step. And if you want to observe more such movements, you can just uh, you know decrease this. And of course, uh, sorry, you can increase it by reducing that value further and increasing this value further. Okay. Hit enter and yes. Okay. So you can see when A is negative 8, what happens? So I like to do this activity in my class where I ask my students to observe okay, what happens as I move the cursor up or down. And they can very quickly see that the, uh, the graph slides across the y-axis. Such a sliding or gliding movement is called translation and translation is described by the vector. Okay. So in this case, the specific vector, because there is no movement along the x-axis, it is going to be zero along the x-axis and whatever movement you describe on the y-axis will, uh, those number of units will represent the y-coordinate. Let me take you back to the presentation. Okay. Uh, so over here, this is also called as a vertical shift or a vertical translation. So this was a very first transformation that we have encountered. So if you have any questions or any doubts still here, please feel free to use the chat so that we can move forward. So this is the very first uh, function. We have played around with the uh, parent function, uh, the quadratic parent function, right? And we have uh, analyzed what happens, what sort of a transformation is developed as a result of f of x plus or minus a constant. Okay, and you can increase or decrease uh, the range accordingly, as I showed you here, or the domain as you would want to call it. Yeah. Any questions this far? Okay, I see. Uh... Okay. All right, Hassan, uh, is it? Uh, shall we continue now? Yeah, yeah. Any no, questions? No, yeah. Okay. No. Uh, moving further, moving further. I'd encourage you now to go ahead and also type in the uh, modulus function. Uh, Rita, uh, before yeah. we move ahead, there is one question like uh, Gopalan asked how to activate the slider. How to activate the slider? Yes. So uh, I'll go ahead to doc for one. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't show you that. I forgot. So add graphs. Okay. And then you go ahead and type in y is equal to x square. Okay. And uh, then you might want to go ahead and put plus and you can just type in any constant, let's say A here, hit enter. And then you have create sliders that automatically gets generated, hit OK and you're done, All right? Now you might want to place this anywhere on your screen, okay? This is your slider tab, right? I'm not sure if there's any other terminology for that, but I like to call it my slider tab and uh, yeah, hit enter and and your job hit enter and then I also hit escape and then you can see as you grab the pointer along the count uh, the slider tab you can see your graph moving along okay it's so smooth with the ti uh, without any much difference and the best feature I like about it is you know you can keep moving from one tab to another tab so if there are many questions in your exam you keep doing doc for one accordingly and open up a new document for every question so if you want to open up uh, or rather revisit a question once again you can always go back to that tab and uh, you know kind of discuss it for example if we were uh, we were discussing this the, in the very beginning and then we moved on to discuss this idea you know wherein I called the function from the function that was already set up and uh, yeah then we went uh, then I already took you to the ready page that I had done then of course you can uh, move on to the page that we were discussing that is this one okay yes any other questions so far are you comfortable with the slider uh, Please make sure that you know you are able to move fluently because this took me some time initially when I was new to the uh, to this calculator. But once you get it, nothing like it. So just hit. Make sure you know how to move it, and you know you are. Uh, you can also change by double clicking here your values. Like if you want to know, okay, uh, you have no time to kind of slide or you know just hit a negative one, enter accordingly. Okay. Sometimes questions are of that nature. They want uh, you to find out the value at a specific point. 
Now the best feature about the graph in the TI is the simultaneous table that you can also generate. Okay, so for example, let's say you wanted to know the table associated with these values. You know, many a times uh, in the IB and even in the IG, you will get questions like, find the point on the transformed graph. So it's always nice to see, okay, when X was one, you know that on the transform graph, it took a value of zero and so on, okay? This feature is, and you can always hit control T and control T again, and you have your original graph back, okay? And uh, I'd like to show you this feature in the very first graph as well, because you know, you can see what happens when X takes a specific value, and then what happens when X takes the value Y squared, Right, so when x is 1, you know that uh, y is 1, correct? And you move a little further and you know that, okay, in the transformed graph, y takes the value 3, it's no longer 1, all right? And yet again, in the other transformed graph, it takes, the, that is in the graph f3, uh, wherein you had the function defined as x square minus 3, you have the y coordinate there as negative 1. So in one step, you know, you have everything ready for you. Okay, and then control T and you have your uh, graph cascading at you there. All right, uh, so that was the very basic uh, quadratic function. And if you know how to do it well with one function, then obviously you're not going to find it difficult with any other function. Okay, uh, yes, I'd encourage you now to go ahead and try any other function. All right, let's do it together. So let's look at, uh, let's say, 1 upon x, okay? Uh, there, is a special, uh, there is a special relationship I share with the uh, 1 by x graph, or rather I, li I like it for a particular reason, and you will see that shortly. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and open a new document. All right, and uh, you can get the template under the division sign here. Okay, so one upon X. Go ahead and hit enter. Now, you know, uh, many a times when students are asked to graph uh, the function, they often draw this above the Y axis. It's important for you to understand that it is not touching the Y axis. The graph, actually, there is a break in the graph when X takes value zero. And that is also obvious uh, or rather, I shouldn't say obvious, but if you inspect the function carefully, right, if x takes the value 0, you know, you get 1 upon 0, and uh, that tends to infinity. Uh, you can always do a menu and go to, uh, yeah, you can go to menu, option number 4, okay, and you can go to zoom box to see this very clearly, okay. So I tell the students to always check the graph carefully. All right. Uh, you might want to do it once again. Yeah. So you can see that the curve approaches the x-axis as x gets larger. However, it never actually touches the x-axis. So it's a discontinuous graph. There is a break in the graph. Okay. Now, uh, I'd encourage you at this point to go ahead and uh, type in y is equal to x. Okay, if you fold the function now across the line uh, y is equal to x, you will see that one arm, right, one arm of the graph is a mirror image of the other arm. And that's, that is why this graph is so beautiful because it is a self-inverse function. Okay. So you can go ahead and also transform this function. So that is what I'd encourage for you to do. So if you want to, you know, or rather have a new graph, you can just call in F1x, okay? And uh, hit plus, uh, now since you're already familiar with the slider, go ahead and hit A. You know, this was, uh, this made it very easy for me in the class when I wanted to, uh, explain different kinds of rational functions because simply because um, the reciprocal function as we call it is a special case of the rational function okay and you will see shortly what i mean by that 
So uh, again, you have your slider ready here and you can see now, you know how your graph actually moves, right? So what happens when A is, uh, when A takes a value minus one, minus two, minus three, minus or plus one, plus two, plus three, okay? What is the relationship between A and any of the asymptotes, if at all? Um, are some of the questions that would help you answer, uh, uh, the graph will help you answer as you transform it, okay? Moving on, let's now take, uh, let's say we want to try the square root of x function, okay? Go ahead and uh, let's try that out. Yeah, go ahead and add a graph and uh, put in square root. So you know that you get square root exactly when there is square here of x and hit enter. Right. So you can see that if this, uh, you know, I like to call this like a bowling arm. So you can see like this is an arm, right? Um, and of course, it is a function because it clears the vertical line test. These are uh, basic questions that you would or you rather you could answer. Uh, when reflecting on, you know, uh, relationships at all. Uh, when I say relationships, I mean relations between the x and the y coordinate. So if it's a one-to-one -one relation, you know that it is a function, right? So one-to-one -one relations and many-to-one -one relations are functions and therefore this is a function because it passes a vertical line test. Go ahead and transform it, right? Uh, this time, try and put, okay, let's do tab. Uh, yeah. Okay, call F1, uh, F1, and you might want to go ahead and this time, instead of putting the constant outside the function, put it with the variable itself. That means X, let's say minus C. Okay, and I'll create a slider for C. Now, let's take our slider tab and uh, Okay, now as I move C, what do you observe this time? Okay, so I'm doing a, a transformation one at a time if you observe. Like I don't want to confuse you with too many variables. I can also do the same thing in one shot, which I will be doing later so that you can have a look. Uh, so if you want to understand the basics of transformations, it's always good to take one variable at a time. Okay, and you can see that, okay, as, uh, as C takes positive values, what happens to the graph, okay? As C takes, as I move uh, the slider more and more to the negative side, what happens to the graph, okay? So such a transformation is called a horizontal shift, okay, or a horizontal translation. And translations are always described by vectors. In this case, uh, you will have the vector as the first component, all right, because it is along the x-axis. All right, so far so good. Any questions, please feel free to ask. So we have completed the uh, x square function or the quadratic function. We then looked at uh, y is equal to 1 upon x, which is the reciprocal function as a special case of the rational function. We now also looked at y is equal to root x, which is a square root function. And with these three functions, we understood the transformations of the vertical shift and the horizontal shift, okay? So, so far, these two have been done. Now, as you can see, I have also put in other transformations for you. So, a simple question that you can work out will be, what happens to the transformation when, let's say you're working out, uh, okay, let me go back to this one moment. Yeah, one second. Okay. Yeah. If I, let's say, go back to this transformation. Okay. And I press tab. Right. Now, I might want to associate an, the number uh, or the constant here itself. Okay. So uh, let's say I want to, I'll call this as B. All right, and I don't put any multiplication symbol or anything. I just put it as B, okay? 
and I hit enter. And so you can say, you can see that it asks you to create a slider for BX. You don't want a slider for BX, you want a slider only for B, right? So go ahead. Uh, oh. One second. Okay, this. <laughs> All right. So let me see whether if you put a multiplication symbol here, it gets any better. Now you can see that it asks you to create a slider for B. Right? In the earlier case, if you don't put a multiplication symbol here, you get a query here wherein it asks you to create a slider for BX. So you might have a problem in that case, okay? So now, since you just want to investigate what happens if a graph is multiplied uh, by a quantity, or rather uh, f of x is multiplied by a quantity, um, by a constant rather, okay? Now, what I'm gonna do is I will set A to be zero so that you know you don't confuse yourself. I could have deleted it there as well but I don't want to confuse you. So I just placed it as zero. And now I, I want to move B, all right, and see what happens. So you can see when B is one, correct? When B is two, when B is three, right? And just for comparison, what I'm gonna do is I will just put out the graph of the basic quadratic there so that you can uh, compare it easily, all right? And I, let me just increase this. Uh, yeah. okay. So now, uh, let me pull down the graph. Oops, okay. Yeah. So that you can view it better. Go ahead and take a look now. Okay. So you can see what happens to the graph when B takes values that become closer and closer and closer. And if you want to further investigate this, you can also put it as 100. And, you know, it is like a man a sta a standing above a, a tall building, you know, with a rope. And then he pulls the rope closer and closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, okay? So this is what is called as a vertical dilation, all right? Uh, and you can see that here, right? So dilation of, uh, the nature of it being vertical and that is described by the constant outside the function okay so far so good are there any queries that you have for me i'll be happy to answer them okay. so so far we have covered the vertical translation we have covered the horizontal translation and we have covered the vertical dilation one each one one at a time and we also looked at different graphs all right now Let's go ahead and understand what would happen if we were to, let's say, consider. Yeah. What would happen if we were to consider the horizontal stretch or the shrink as in as it is described here, f of ax. Okay. So uh, you might want to. Place your graph a little and then hit tab. Um, oops, I don't seem to be getting my. Yeah, now it's here. So over here itself, go ahead and make the change. That means you want to now put in another variable. So let me call it plus C. Okay. And it's asking you if you want to create a slider, go ahead and say okay. okay. Now you can see that there's an overlap. No worries, just pick it up and place it here. Okay. You can see that C is one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, yeah, I'll just place, uh, yeah, hit enter and escape. And then over here, go ahead and hit B as one. Okay. 
and I'd also go ahead and put a as zero. Okay. Right. Now, in case you want, oops. Okay. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to place this uh, no, for some reason. Okay, I think I will need your help, Hassan. Uh, did I'm trying right to click, place. That's right. No, I'm trying to move. place all the all the sliders one below the other. Right click and move. Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there you go. You got the hint. All right. Now uh, I have set A as zero. Okay, so technically this doesn't matter to you. I have set B as one. Okay, so you can see that I'm only trying to understand what will C do to the graph. So go ahead and uh, okay, uh, increase C and then decrease C to see what happens to the graph. Okay, so what do you observe? Right, students often. Uh, say that okay this is a horizontal translation okay now we've already discussed the plus sign right so let me change that to multiplication so i'll go ahead and i'll put this as cx and let's say minus t uh, Okay, this is not a very good graph to kind of get this idea, but never mind. It's just to uh, instill in you the idea. Yeah. Okay, so you'll have uh, two more sliders here, and accordingly, when you move one of the graphs, you'll you should be able to see the transformation in the other. Okay. What I will do is because you you might not be able to see what happens in this case as in what happens to the horizontal sh shrink very clearly in that graph. We will discuss the horizontal shrink when I take you to uh, the trigonometric graphs. All right. Now, uh, yeah, coming back. So we've already played around with quite a few of these uh, graphs, as you can see here. And in the TI uh, sheet, you will see that each function is explained to you. We are trying to currently work out this one. Okay. And I will, I will show you this when we do the trigonometric graphs. Okay. Because you won't be able to see the shrink uh, clearly here. Okay. Or maybe you can one sec. Let me just take a new document and show you only the shrink. So if I go ahead and I type X, right. If I type C X, the whole square, you should be able to see it, okay? But of course you can make it, make that out clearly when, uh, uh, I do, yes, so you can see that I have not put the bracket clearly here. Yeah. Hit enter and uh, so Rita, you need to put multiplication sign between yes you know? correct i always forget the multiplication sign yeah thank you <laughs> it happened even when i was uh, doing my trigonometric function today itself yeah so go ahead and hit the multiplication sign students okay and uh, go ahead and also one second yeah do this there you go so hopefully it should work now there you go thanks Hassan. okay so uh, you don't want that there you can cut it up no how do i delete this uh, yeah, delete. Right, right. there you go okay so go ahead and increase your values here okay and then decrease your values here now you might argue saying that you know uh, oh it was the same thing as if you multiplied uh, the entire x square function with the constant that was outside so therefore I say, you know, it's best to study horizontal uh, dilation using trigonometric functions or for that matter, even square root, I think. Yeah. So uh, quite a few functions that we've covered here. 
I encourage you to also kind of move on and study for yourself the logarithmic and the exponential functions. Okay. Next, uh, some more transformations are the reflection in the x-axis and the reflection in the y-axis. This is again, uh, sorry, this is again best studied individually for you to understand this better. You can also see this through a movement of a point. Okay. Um, so the reflection in the x and y axis is directly obtained by putting the negative sign. So you know that if it is in the x axis, the negative sign is outside the function. And if it is in the y axis, the negative sign is inside the function. Okay. This is what we just discussed. If you have a scale factor outside the function, you'll have a vertical stretch. This is what I am going to show you with respect to the trigonometric graphs. Okay. Uh, this is just a specific example to understand what happens when you take the number, what happens to the scale factor. Okay. And then I have put out uh, the notations for, for you here that I took from the um, TI website. All right. And it tells you clearly, you know, we, we as in uh, this is vertical, the movement is vertical. All right. There's a vertical stretch. Sorry, there's a vertical translation. Here there's a horizontal translation. In this case, there's a dilation. All right. And so on. And the, you have, there are combinations of these as well. Now, um, yeah. So you, you, can, you, you can experience different movements of transformations depending on the value that B takes. So if B is taking a positive value or B is taking a negative value, accordingly, what happens? We've discussed this. We've discussed this case as well. And we've discussed a combination of this as well. Okay. Uh, part of this is what I have covered with you, wherein we looked at, you know, f of x plus uh, 2, x squared plus 2, and so on. Okay? Now, the same thing I tried to show you using the um, exponents, right? And you can also have the cubic graph or uh, the reciprocal graph, as I was showing you earlier. And you can also have the transformed quadratic graph, which is a horizontal transformation, Correct? by a scale factor, uh, sorry, by vector 1, 0. You know it is 1, 0 because if you equate x minus 1, the whole square, to 0, you know that x is operating at the point 1. All right. Um, this was what we are to study. I don't, uh, students don't normally see this very easily in the quadratic graph. So I would encourage you to do this using the trigonometric graphs. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, these are also covered accordingly. This is a combination of transformations, as you can see. So this is a vertical translation, or rather a horizontal translation followed by a vertical translation. We follow the HSRV rule. Okay. Uh, Gita, there is one question. Yes. Uh, somebody asked, like, I think uh, she want to know the... P, uh, this greatest integer function uh, because she, uh, uh, I don't know, she uh, that asks like y equals to greatest integer x and y equal to fx generic piecewise. Okay. Uh, so, if uh, so you want to, if you want to speak, uh, you, uh, we can unmute you. Can you, uh, you just have to uh, raise your hand and we will unmute you and you can ask your question. Like, uh, we are not able to understand what you specifically want to ask. Uh, uh, yeah, there's an anonymous attendee. Okay. What is why is equal to I what think, I think uh, 12 and 13. Uh, okay. So uh, what you can do is when the sheet is shared with you, right? It's all here. So you can easily click on these two links and it will, is the greatest integer function is also called as a step function. So you can just click on these two links and it will take you exactly to uh, understanding, you know, the piecewise function. So piecewise function is basically for a particular part of the domain, how a function def is defined and for the other part of the domain, how it is defined. Okay. If we have time towards the end, I'd love to show you at least the piecewise function. Okay. Uh, shall we move on, Hassan? So I'm, I'm sure they'll have the sheet with them so they can just click and accordingly, it, there's a whole video explanation of it, right? So uh, moving on to the the trigonometric function okay because this is this is part of your syllabus whereas the greatest integer function is not part of your syllabus uh, uh, but you can always use it to develop your exploration or your ia if you have ideas in that direction now 
when you uh, now as you can see you know i like to do this uh, kind of an investigation with my students i ask them to uh, put in a slider okay where so you can see here that the slider you would generate is y is equal to a sin x and in the process when a increases i ask them what is the maximum what is the minimum what is the period and what is the amplitude so once you know the terminology associated with a trigonometric function as in maximum minimum period amplitude frequency all of uh, the terminology associated with it right the principal axis then you will be able to uh, follow uh, how the function looks and as it gets transformed the meaning associated with amplitude all right so uh, from here they can easily conclude later post investigating the graphs what the amplitude of the respective graph would be so i'd like to take up at least one of these to show you what happens okay so i had done a bit earlier and you can see yeah one second this is yeah so uh, a is 1 b is 1 c is 1 and d of course is negative 1 and hence the graph has gotten translated okay so you can see that you'll get all the uh, sliders towards one end and then you can just right click on it and uh, it uh, move it along all right so let's do this just to understand it better hit doc for one and create a new document add graphs uh go to a sign okay now there's a way in which you put this in as well so a uh, multiplied by sign uh okay now many students put uh, the function in as bx plus c but i encourage them to write b outside the bracket okay so b uh, times x plus c plus d okay okay and it's asked you to create sliders for all so you know that you have uh, generated the function correctly right now uh yeah so if you want to just move any one of them you just uh, right click and accordingly move okay now let's say i want to compare this with my very basic function of y is equal to sin x okay take note of the mode you are in Okay, sometimes the graphs will not graph if your your geometry angle is not matching your uh, window angle. So go ahead and hit tab. One second, okay. Yes. Uh, yeah. So go ahead and type in sin x because we are just trying to use. Um. Okay. I don't know why that came up. Hang on. Yeah, I should have put sin x in a bracket. That's why that came up. Skip. One sec. Yes. So over here, if you just type in sin x directly, it will ask you to create sliders. But if you put this in a bracket, hopefully it should not. So yeah, there you can see. So you can see now. This is your uh, basic sin graph. Okay. The red one. The red one, as you can see here, is your basic sin graph. and now you want to understand the transformations with respect to uh with respect to let's say this function all right uh so you want to understand the transformations with respect to this functions all right so what you can do is just go ahead and increase a all right and you can see what's happening to the graph right now make it zero and you can see what happens and then make it negative and then you can compare all right so and uh, a good exercise here students love to play around with this so a, a good exercise here is i ask the students keep adjusting the uh, quantities so as to overlap b or the blue graph over the c graph all right and then the c graph over the b graph and let's just understand a little bit of terminology further here okay so uh, you will see that the number sitting next to x okay whatever number is next to x so that's the reason i was telling you earlier that when you are putting in bx 
make sure your b is outside the bracket because you will see shortly when i show you the general function y okay so over here you can see as i've already shown you here b affects the period okay the period of the function is 2 pi by b and b affects the period all right just as the number that sits outside here affects the amplitude in this case the number that sits outside the modulus of this number is what becomes your amplitude okay now uh, as you can see it's uh, it's building up so i often like to give students just this plain exercise because they often get confused with phase shift okay so in your basic graph what you do is for one add graphs so if you're doing let's say sin x or you can just type sin sin and then don't forget to put x in a bracket or just take it from this function because this will automatically give it to you in that format okay then uh, now you want to investigate what happens to sin of x minus c okay so go ahead and again uh, use the function here it's the safest way to do it minus c let's say and you can put in a slider for that now c is already taking the value 1 and therefore you can see that it is uh, the graph is towards the right right is, uh, or the blue graph is towards the left of the red graph right now okay. now you can see what happens when c is 0 that means when c is 0 you you can obviously see that sin x is the same as sin of x minus c right now when you make c negative and then make it more negative right it really feels like a nice ripple effect okay so you can see that there is your horizontal translation here okay now let's say you want to hang on uh yeah you want to perform c multiplied by x all right so go ahead and type in c multiplied by x and hit enter okay so over here if you go ahead and reduce c to 0 what happens to your red graph so you get sin 0 okay then make it 1 and you get sin x make it 2 so this is used to ask yourself how many periods of the graph exist in one period of the blue graph or rather how many times is the red graph repeating itself to uh, you know kind of accommodate one entire cycle of the blue graph okay so this is very useful to teach period all right and you can see that also affects the frequency okay yeah so uh, through this you can understand uh as i had shown you earlier through this you can understand this part that is the horizontal stretch or the horizontal shrink okay remember the scale factor will always be described in the opposite format as in uh in this case the scale factor will be described as 1 upon a so vertical shifts are described by vectors horizontal shift is again described by vectors dilations vertical or horizontal are described by scale factors okay reflections of course are described by the negative sign as you have seen in the earlier slides so we have covered this as well and we've also uh, summarized this okay we've also looked at this parts and this is done right we were uh, talking about plus or minus okay uh, you might also want to try out minus pi by 3 Okay, because we just tried out numbers, so you might also want to try it exclusively separately. Just go ahead, go ahead and punch in minus pi by three and check and see what you arrive at. All right. Uh, now, so y is equal to sine x minus c is a horizontal translation of y is equal to sine x. This is the vertical translation of y is equal to sine x, and y is equal to sine of x minus c plus d is a translation of Uh, sin x in the vector c this is what i was telling you so the movement of c um affects the x axis and d affects the y axis all right with that 
we then have other graphs that we can uh, with that just just give me a moment yeah sorry so with that we have other graphs that we can uh, that we might want to try out the same transformations okay and your summary here all right now i do have a bunch of questions that uh, you do get from an exam perspective so i'd be happy to try that out for you all right you might want to reflect on this for a moment and i'll be happy to take your questions as well yes any parts that you want me to repeat okay you can feel free to use the q and a to type in your questions while i also show you some other features of uh, the ti inspire and how you can use ready made graphs and also uh, use it for applications so what you can do now is uh, let me open up yeah let me go to doc uh, open document and i have saved earlier um yes yeah so you can see transformations of logarithmic functions i know i had asked you to also try this out but just in case you know you are one of the lazy type of student who doesn't want to go ahead and punch in all of this you can have the ready made tns files as we call it okay and you can see what happens when you uh, kind of you know decrease b and what happens when you increase b how does it affect the logarithmic graph okay and of course when you have log of x plus a to the base b what are the restrictions you should put on b and what are the restrictions you should put on x plus a all right so when a takes value more and more how is the graph being transformed right you can see that it is a horizontal translation when uh when let me decrease yeah yeah let me bring this to side and now you can see when i make b less what happens and when i make b more what happens okay it almost feels like a bending movement right if you were to touch your toes it almost feels like a bending movement if you try to kind of uh, simulate this yourself okay so this was the tns file for logarithmic functions let me go ahead and show you uh something that you could do with respect to you know a toolkit idea for your ia so this is something that i really loved yeah so trigonometric transformations and this is a simulation so you know very often you will get questions wherein you will get the unit circle and you will get uh, questions related to the ferris wheel or a clock and also tidal waves and you can see when i start animation here you can see how beautifully this is represented on to the time in minutes and the height in feet okay this is a classic example of a tidal wave graph okay or also as i said earlier the ferris wheel so when you play around with this you know you can stop it at any point then you can ask yourself would there be another repetition of the same graph okay how would you uh, arrive at um you know an equation for this graph by finding the amplitude the principal axis uh in comparison to the graph i showed you earlier okay so you might want to observe what happens in one cycle and then as the cycle develops what happens next okay i hope you uh are able to you know kind of visualize the movement along the circle and the corresponding movement along the graph of course there are many other softwares in which you can do it as well but i like it best because you can find all of it in one place okay now uh, the best thing about having an emulator uh, is if you just go on to uh, content and then you come to math inspired and if you type in uh, any of your uh, functions here you can find all your tns files here right if that is of course if you have the advantage of having your uh, uh, emulator with you okay so if you have any further questions i'll be happy to take that and uh, the last point i want to uh, tell you is when you when you're typing in the function okay 
when you when you typing in the function when you typing when you typing in the just give me a moment students yeah sorry small confusion this side yes so if when you are typing out the function students you can see that b affects the period so make sure that the b is outside and even if you want to go ahead and type b within x uh, make sure that if you are taking the b out then you accordingly take care of the c by b okay yes so i think with that i will conclude this session hasan over to you yeah greta uh, so thank you thank you for the presentation so student if you have any question you can ask uh, there is one question can you explain the general sine function again uh, i think that will take time to explain uh, the whole uh, sine function again uh, any other question we will we will i can, will... Still, I can uh, we can uh, listen to all the questions and uh, as much as i can go ahead and explain i would love to do it okay yeah yeah Uh, go ahead and take a moment to type your function student so i'll be happy to uh, take you through it so we share my screen again yeah so if you uh, if you have to understand the sine function uh, i will just exit so uh let's go to this yeah so go ahead and type in sine x remember put a bracket otherwise you will get sin x as just um a quantity right now as you can see this is uh, i i like to ask my students what do you observe about it so they'll all say waves and some say that it repeats and i like it when they say it repeats because you observe that yes it is a periodic function and you can see the relationship of the graph to the unit circle okay uh now the distance this this x axis here is what we call the principal axis all right and it is nothing but the average of the maximum and the minimum of the graph all right and how do you find the maximum and the minimum of such graphs you can always go to menu analyze graph and you have your maximum minimum options here okay you uh, you can also find intersections uh if the sine graph intersects any other graph uh, using the analyze graph feature okay uh so this was your principal axis you have your maximum you have your minimum now from the principal axis to the maximum or from the principal axis to the minimum that distance is what we call as the amplitude so in your in your uh, i mean in the graph here in the let me just take yeah so when you see y is equal to a sin x right where a is not zero because if a is zero then you don't even have a function you just have y is equal to zero and what is y is equal to zero it is the equation of the x axis right now uh, so why, uh, so make sure that you know you have your uh, uh, constraints in place so once you have associated a with uh, the amplitude by understanding that modulus of a will give you the amplitude then of course you can go ahead and transform the function in that direction all right now uh, so that takes care of a uh, the next part is b all right so if you have a sin bx if i combine these two and i form a sin bx b will affect the period all right and the scale factor of b is 1 by b all right so why is it so it's because when it acts at that point right the operation is such that uh if you if you compare the two graphs you will observe that the scale factor is 1 by b all right so far so good so uh yeah so over here it will be a good exercise for you to just type in uh y is or rather this is equal to a sin x okay and remember i am i keep making that mistake and my course students keep reminding me to put the bracket there All right, and you can see I have also made that mistake again. I think so. Please go ahead and for safety, just go and put a multiplication sign here. Okay, hit enter. Now you have your slider. So now you can see what happens for each of the features of the graph. So I'd encourage you to do it separately. Okay, to do what separately? I'll just show you this part. To do each of these separately. That means first you just take the graph with y is equal to a sine x or 
uh, then you go ahead and type in y is equal to sine bx and see what happens. Okay, this x minus c you can do the last. All right, uh, uh, go ahead after you've typed in a sine x and then once you've typed in y is equal to sine bx, then you can go ahead and type in sine uh, x plus d. Okay, and see what happens to the graph. And finally, bring in y is equal to sine x minus c. Okay, and then you will see the wave movement that I was showing you earlier. This affects the phase shift of the graph. The C affects the phase shift of the graph. Okay. Uh, so I think that uh, hopefully that should have answered your question by now. Yeah. Hassan, any more questions? No, Vita. Yeah. Uh, is there any other question uh, do you want to ask? If not, uh, thank you all for joining the, uh, the session. I hope you liked the session and you enjoyed this. And we will be uploading this session to YouTube. Uh, you can go there and you can check the YouTube page uh, of ours to get more uh, videos as well. Like previously, we have done many webinars. So let me just share that YouTube link in the chat so that you can go and you can check. Yeah. Hassan, with the with this recording, you can also go ahead and uh, share the uh, the PDF that I was talking about. Yeah, I will also mail you separately all the PDFs. Okay. Don't worry. Yeah, all the participants will get the PDF files that uh, Gita was using, and the recording will be available on the YouTube page uh, on Monday. Okay, so thank you, thank you for joining. Bye. Thank you, Gita. Thank you, thank you, Hassan. Thank you, Revati. Thank you, students. Yeah, just give me a minute. Yeah. So actually, we were using Casio for a very long time. I am uh, working in uh, Gurgaon in, with Scottish Eye uh, since 2014. And we have been using Casio since then, Casio uh, mm -hmm. Graphic Design Calculator. And we were, uh, over the years, we had become very comfortable with Casio. But mm -hmm. we realized in a couple of years that uh, students mostly are using Texas all over the world, mostly when they are going for their higher studies uh, and to different universities across the world, they are using Texas instruments over there. So basically what their, their knowledge or, or comfort with the Casio calculator is not helping them over there. So yeah. we decided to shift to Texas because uh, eventually they would have to use that only so uh, and now uh, what happens is when we teach uh, like in the webinars or the the workshops uh, we learn so many things at one go it is difficult little bit difficult for us to remember everything so when mm -hmm. we go wise and we use uh, we want to understand the use of the calculator what we do is basically we, uh, as teachers, we mostly take help of the short videos which are available on YouTube, teaching the, say, I want to find out vector product or I want to uh, do some statistics, uh, say, for example, chi-square testing using the calculator. So the short tutorials are available for TI uh, very easily. Uh, so we use those videos to understand how to do a particular thing in the calculator. Right now, we are quite comfortable with the calculator. Okay, okay. That, that's nice. And I'm happy to see like you guys are shifting to different technology and it's helping you a lot. You started allowing it all. So, uh, ma'am, if, if you have uh, any, any questions for any of sort of the functions you want to grab, if you're not able to find any, so you can always contact us. We are always there to help you out. And we can study the short session maybe for 20 to 30 minutes. And we can help you out with any particular session. Or you want. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Children, please feel free to ask your questions, any questions that you have uh, to the facilitators in today's session and try to make the most of the session. Yeah, please do. I guess exams are also coming uh, as much So it would be uh, like great if we can. Uh, Ask as many questions if you want. Yes, especially for the AI students, all the three papers, there every component is calculator based. So for them, the calculator is very very important. So uh, they should know be very uh, comfortable with the calculator actually. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I think we should start and let the student join later. Uh, yes, yes. They, you please start. Please start. Yeah.
Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sora, and I welcome you all uh, on this our uh, very short uh, session, which is uh, hosted by Numerical and Entertainment Private Limited, and uh, I I am the Education Technology Consultant here. And today uh, with us uh, we have uh, Mr. Hasan, who is the Senior uh, Education Technology Consultant, and there is uh, one esteemed uh, guest with us, Dr. Pavin Shivastav Sir. Who is the uh, HOD? Uh, HOD of he was heading the maths department at Ahmedabad International School, and has been teaching maths uh, maths for the last uh, almost nine ten years, and IVTP program for nine years. And according to him, being a teacher is only suited to those who are willing to be learners always, and do agree with him, sir. And he has been all uh, associated with the IVTP program for last uh, many years also. He is a part of our numerical family. He has been also working with us on the concepts and, and the other programs also. And he has already uh, conducted many workshops and on graphic uh, display calculators and graphics software. And right now uh, we are glad to have you here, sir. And um, we welcome you here on this platform. So now uh, I guess he can take over and he can help you with the uh, the portions and the functions which calculator can help you a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Am I audible to everybody? Yes, sir. All right. So yes, sir. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, as uh, Mr. Uh, Sarah has already told me that uh, I'm Praveen and working with the uh, AIS Ahmedabad International School, and uh, now. i'm going to uh, discuss in this uh, session about discover the maths aa and uh, maths ai of ib using the ti inspire cx2 so as uh, just now i was just listening the conversation of uh, saurav and uh, madam um, spandita that uh, regarding the uh, aa and ai so i will just add some in that and then i will start my first i will do my presentation and then we will do hands on practice on the gdc here okay so <clears throat> now as the ai and a basically the difference between ai and a is that uh, ai having a practical approach more comparatively while uh, a having which is the analysis and approaches We have a theoretical approach here. Then, in our uh, new structure, which is started from uh, uh, 2019, uh, the standard level is now become the subset of your higher level. So, all the contents of the standard level will consider as the subset. Either it is the case of uh, AI or it is the case of AA. And there are the certain intersection portion you can see, which is quite common. and earlier we used to co call as a, in higher level we used to call it the core curriculum so now that core curriculum is uh, common in ai and your aa now we will see here the structure of mathematics basically our mathematics uh, of ib diploma either aa or ai uh, consist of five units that is number and algebra then functions geometry and trigonometry statistics and probability and calculus yeah uh, basically when we talk about so, and the concepts would be approximation quantity generalization equivalence space system relationship representation modeling validity changes pattern now one point i would like to discuss with all of us that earlier uh, when the structure was mathematics higher level and standard level so basically in the higher level the two parts were there one is called core part and another is a optional part and in option there were the four options we used to offer that uh, calculus statistics and probability then discrete mathematics and set group and relation now after restructuring the mathematics of uh, ib diploma they convert they have <clears throat> include your option 
in uh, mathematics in the ai and aa so in ai they include the statistic probability and some portion of the discrete mathematics while in uh, aa the complete math complete uh, optional calculus included in that so that is why in aa the calculus weightages are more comparatively ai and in ai the statistics and probability optional uh, weightage is higher comparatively the aa now with the help of ti inspire i like to lose the uh, ti and introduce this okay, how we will use the concepts of this uh, a and ai using the calculator here so now as i said in number and algebra we will have the concepts called pvm that is time value of machine where we need to find the future value present value interest rate time and pmt then uh, the second one is matrices the arithmetic operation determinant inverse application characteristics polynomial eigen value and eigen vector uh, during the discussion the matter was said that is quite quite clear here that uh, in ai this is 100% use of calculator in assessment because in all three papers uh, paper 1 2 and 3 and also in exploration you are allowed to use calculator while in a there is a restriction only in the paper 1 you are not allowed to use calculator in the rest of the place you can allow it another important thing here is uh you will find that the mathematical exploration weight is also they have increased earlier we were getting the 10 hours but now they increase the weight is here and then they made it the 30 hours for the preparation of mathematical exploration so that is a common in both now when we talk about the functions you will have the questions and the concepts like substitution and graphing transformation graphing functions modeling analysis of graph then in the geometry and trigonometry you will find perpendicular bisector this is a new concept that is a voronoi diagram they introduce uh, of course but it is only in the standard level here graph theory and t value value of t ratios earlier also we were calculating it so nothing new in that statistics probability here the fundamental of statistics then uh, graphical representation bivariate analysis probability distributions confidence interval and hypothesis testing so here as i said the statistics in ai the weight is higher of statistics in terms of confidence and in confidence interval and hypothesis testing which was the part of your optional statistics now it become the core part of this so now they have removed all the options and they divided into the aa and ai then the next thing here is the calculus so to find the derivative of the various functions at a given point and to plot the gradient function of the given function then equation of tangent and normal stationary point nature of stationary point whether the maxima minima to find the definite integral of the function and its application now as uh, already uh, you said that you are already using this uh, cal calculator so quickly i will just show you the feature of this and then we will proceed it here this is the home page menu on the calculator you will get here the different apps here this is calculator mode graph geometry list and spreadsheet data statistics notes vernier data quest so these are the things are allowed and it is given in the calculator rest of the two options eight number and nine number is not allowed to use in the exam papers this is calculator mode here the important thing is while doing the calculation of the trigonometry then you can see on the right upper corner that rad written means radian and uh, 
you can can change into the degree also as per the requirement. But trigonometric graph must have to do with the radial mode only. This is a graph, geometry, spreadsheet, statistics mode. Here you can able to make a regression graph. You can prepare notes. And this is the additional feature here, Vernier Data Quest. So there are the sensors available. You can use these sensors here, then automatically you can record the data. So now I will take you to the demonstration of the calculator. And uh, in case of your questions, you can use chat box to ask that. I would appreciate that. Yes, so uh, is all of you are able to see my screen where the half part I put it for my activity sheet and in the half part of the screen, I'm demonstrating the calculator here. Mr. Saurav, are you able to see this? Yes, sir, we can see. All right. Yes, sir. Okay, so as I discussed with you, uh, this is my worksheet here. And in the worksheet, I, I try to include the different, different kind of the questions and then how to solve those questions on the calculator that I will side by side, I, I can able to show you there. So now uh, first we will begin with the financial package as I told you that is a TVM. And now in the exam, you will be asked that you have to use TVM package of the calculator and need to give the answer of the questions here. So in a TVM structure would be N where the number of compounding, compounding periods, I annual percentage rate, PV present value, PMT that is payment amount, or you can say the EMIs, future value payment per year. So P slash Y and C slash Y is compounding period per year. Because we know that the questions sometimes used to come when it is annually, or, come, or it is a half yearly or monthly. Accordingly, we will have to select the option here. So now the first question here, uh, there's a loan. Loan is, is a process of repaying the loan with the series of regular payments. That is called the amortization here. The question here, the Erika take out a personal loan of uh, dollar 16,500 to buy a car. She negotiate in, negotiates a term for four years at 5.5 interest. Calculate the monthly repayments here. So now to begin with any workings, first you need to select new. Now you need to go in a calculator mode, menu. And now in a menu, you will go in a Finance solver here. Here, the first thing they are asking. So this is called your uh, package here, and uh, through the package you need to find the answer, and we need to find the PMT here. So first thing they have given the personal loan. So now the number of years and the number of years we supposed to write in the terms of months only. So four year. So you can write here four. 12, the rate of interest given here, that is 5.5. Then the present value that would be 500. Future value would be zero. And now we need to see here because it is written in the question 
monthly so that is why we have to select 12 here and this previous value we supposed to take the negative now we want the value of so we just enter here as you will enter you will be able to get the monthly repayments here so the value would be 383.73 so this way you can easily able to find out through the and the questions also will ask in a paper accordingly only because they will not ask you to show the procedure and all the things here now similarly we can approach to uh, the other questions like uh, question 3 here if you want you can save this document also So by using, clicking over the doc, then uh, you can go and uh, save or save as, through that you can able to save it. Now we will proceed to the next question here. So again, the procedure would be same. So Ryan take out the 10,000 loan to be repaid over the three years and the rate of interest is 9.6 compounded monthly. So again, we and then we also need to find out the balance after one year here. So first thing we will see here. So there's a three years. So again, three into, you can directly type 36 also, there's no issue. Or if you don't want, you can type this. So that you can able to find out here 320. Now the case here is key they want uh, after one year what would be the outstanding balance. So in that scenario you need to type 12 here. So after one year means after 12 months. After 12th month, your outstanding balance would be 6979.840. So this way we can able to solve these problems. These are the some of the problems of book, some of the problems I have taken from the paper also. So wherever you find to ask any question, as I said, you can use chat box and can we can discuss here. Now, so the this is the about this. Another thing here you can find the entity, entity, and these are the two concepts in a new AI curriculum they have introduced here. So entity and investment where the individual makes a lump sum deposit and then regular withdraw over the fixed period of uh, fixed time <clears throat> period here. So now the problem here is uh, that uh, Ether has just retired at the age of 65 and she has a dollar 
90 lakhs and uh, in her uh, saving fund she roll over the money into the into an NET fund which uh, return 4 percent per annum compounded monthly year so if Heather withdraw dollar uh, 5400 per month to live on how long will it take for the money in the fund to run out here so this again the procedure and it is advisable that uh, we follow the procedure this so here <clears throat> We will work that uh, your rate of interest would be four percent. Then because we want to find here time. So the N value, we will keep it blank. Then the previous value, we will be taking So this way you can able to get 243 months. So I hope that everybody must have understood this thing. Now uh, I'll take the, the concept, which is the part of our algebra matrices. Uh, about the matrices, I would like to say that the, this concept is uh, removed in uh, previous, like in 2014 to 2019, there were no matrix concept, but after restructuring this uh, content, they introduced the matrices and this is the part of the AI curriculum now. So like finding the determinant of matrix, inverse of matrix, and then addition, multiplication, and uh, solving the simultaneous equations and uh, finding the characteristic equation, eigenvalue, eigenvector, etc. So we will see that how to find out it. So procedure, Calculator mode. Now we are looking for how to find the determinant of the matrix. So first of all, we will have to create a matrix. We'll have the option number seven and create matrix here. Looking for uh, two rows, two columns, so two by two matrix. So we will enter data two, five, three and minus one. Then you can store this value in any variable. 
now as we want the determinant value of this just a minute But sir, I think as per the IB guidelines, uh, we will not be allowed to use the calculator for finding out the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. That option will be blocked uh, in exam mode. Yes, but ma'am, practice purpose, the students can do that. Practice purpose, they can do that, but then they will get into that habit of using the calculator and manual. Practice calculator. in a sense, uh, practice. see, practice in a sense, what I'm saying, key, like steps. If it is required, then definitely you have to show the all steps, how to find out it. And uh, just for the final result verification, can be able to do with the help of this. So as I, uh, I'm saying that key like, this, uh, this device. Yeah, I understood what, uh, I understood. Hmm. Trying to say, but the thing is that when the that option will be blocked during the exam, we mm -hmm. yes, yes, to, yes. That uh, moment, use that. Yeah, that yeah. moment. That moment we can't. But during the class or during the practice purpose, yeah, they can just see that the calculator exactly helps with that also. But during the IB exam, mm -hmm. we are allowed to use that. Okay. Yes. We are allowed. Yes. To, yeah. So sorry, actually the unexpectedly my app of this calculator got shut down. Now we will continue again. And uh, now when we need to find out the determinant, So this way you can be able to get it this. And the case of inverse also like in a question number 2a. So we will create it. And when we are looking for the inverse of this, so then type B. And through this way, you can able to work out the inverse of the matrix here. So is it necessary to store the matrix and then find out the inverse? Because we have seen during the class that if we enter mm -hmm. the matrix and just yeah, directly it. also you can do it, but uh, up, up to uh, the candidate is he like if you use it into the one of these variable, then only you require to use variable only. You do not require to re retype the matrix. Like here, you can see uh, I stored in a, a my matrix 2, 3, three minus one and in a B, I store my matrix here, six, four, five, nine. So now for the further calculation, I can directly use A and B here. I don't require anything else in this. So A, suppose if uh, in a third question, 
suppose if i want to do the multiplication of this so i can directly do this automatically my the values of a and b which is stored already in the variable uh, will remain there and directly we can able to get it particularly like sometime if we are solving the matrix equation where the matrix a b and c are there just to avoid the typing again and again we can store in the variable and then variables we can use it and find out the uh, and perform any arithmetic operation which we want to do that here yeah. Yeah, when there is several yeah. subparts uh, to a question, then it yes, is then it is quite it helpful. Is. If it is only one question you are doing, then either you store one time or then doesn't it doesn't require. I I would say that. But if you are further using that, then it is useful in that scenario. So the operations you can do that way. Like like uh, uh, now this uh, system of equation questions also used to come. and uh, we need to solve through the matrices method rather than the simultaneous and because that to or elimination etc so so now here the particularly the concept we need to do here that is a uh, x equals to a inverse b and uh, first we need to make it a argument matrix and then we take a inverse of that and multiply with the b here so considering that so how we will find this we can do here so again the procedure would be same to or uh, or as you said ke direct method also we can able to apply in fact uh, you we can do with this way also this is a this is a direct method you can apply this so 2 3 5 4 and then need to take a inverse of this star and b matrix so that would be Is four and seventeen, and then you can get the value of x and y. So <clears throat> these are the things introduced in the our AI curriculum this time. The last question of this one is uh, finding the characteristic equation. Eigen value and eigen vector. If you want save, you can do that one. Otherwise, now here the characteristic characteristic equation you can only able to get uh, if you have the calculator cas cas mode of this this calculator is available cx2 uh, where the cas and non cas so if you have the cas version then only you can able to get the characteristic equation of this so i will show otherwise you can uh, only able to do get the eigen values and vector here menu advance now the characteristic equation equation we define in terms of the variable so say for example if i am taking x so then this would be the 
characteristic equation of this. And uh, if you want to find the eigenvalue and vector, then again, So the purpose of uh, uh, ma'am as uh, storing this, as you said, if we are using the same matrix in multiple places, then we can store in particular variable and that variable we can use in wherever we required. So it, through that we can work little more faster rather than again and again typing this equation. Yeah, so and many of our students don't have this uh, CAS version. Yes. Yeah, so, so CAS yeah, only so the, the if you don't have the CAS version, then only the thing is this key polynomial will not get it. Otherwise, eigenvalue and eigenvectors can get it. Is uh, now, ma'am. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, this uh, CAS version also because uh, they have already given that when we do the press to test mode, that time we can block the CAS feature also. So just for the practice purpose or just for the verification during that time, if they are using the cash calculator, then also there is no problem in that. Okay. So now the next thing is Eigen value. Uh, we got it now vector here. So this way you can able to get the eigenvector here. If you put it into the form of fraction, so you will get the same answer as we were doing with the procedural way. So these are the things we have newly introduced in our uh, curriculum of uh, algebra. And uh, apart from that, the complex number. So same thing and uh, in the yeah, just a minute, somebody ask the question. So now uh, this way uh, we can use in the matrices and the financial package of this. And uh, for the, I'm not include here in the activity sheet, but I can tell you like uh, when you want to do this uh, in for the uh, complex number purpose, that moment you need to do one setting here. Here real or complex, so it is right now it is real only, but you will have to select the rectangular. Then you can able to do the calculation with the complex numbers here. So like uh, just uh, like if you want to find the complex root, so we need to go in the polynomial tools degree two. So this is a quadratic equation. And if you put up one, one and one here, then there is no real root in this because it will give you the complex root. And uh, I'll also show you that what exactly root we will be getting.
so 2i the negative things we can get it Yeah, so this way you can able to get the complex rules. So all the complex uh, problems like addition, subtraction, mod, all those things also we can able to find out here. Now I will take you to directly the function part of this. So like, uh, and also, I will uh, discuss in this the regression part and uh, the parts of the calculus like finding the stationary point, the nature of a stationary point, then uh, increasing interval, decreasing in interval, etc. And equation of tangent, etc. we will discuss here. So, like first thing is uh, the first part here in this uh, finding the uh, or making the graph of this. So we need to go in a new mode and then now we will work with the graph mode here. So we need to find out the axis intercepts here. So it's one of the equation like uh, 2x plus 13. If we consider this right now, we can't be able to see the y intercept here. So we need to adjust the window. So you need to go in a window setting and then here the maximum value of y we can make it say 20 and then okay so this way you can able to see the axis intercepts of this. So for the x intercept, you need to put up here the lower bound because we know that this is the point of intersection. Uh, so we need to click, bring your our cursor. Might have we can able to see the dotted line. So left side of this, so it is written lower bound. As you will click it, it become upper bound and you need to bring to the other side here. And then you can able to find out the x intercept here. While y intercept is clearly visible here, which is uh, when you substitute x zero, so that point would be considered. Or if you want through this only, you need to go in a trace here. And then you need to just click this. So you will be getting here zero comma 13. So that way you can able to find the x and y intercepts in this. Then <clears throat> now the, the pair of system of equations, we can find out it. So by drawing the or typing the equation. So like we need to convert it into the MX plus C format here. So the second question, y equal to minus two upon five X. So minus two upon five. So one equation and the second one is minus two X plus uh, minus three. Now again, we need to set window.
So we can see the intersection point, menu, analyze graph, and fourth option, intersection, you need to select, right? So, so this way you can able to find the point of intersection here. So this is a graphic method of finding the point of intersection. And now uh, the question number three, For the question number three, when the rather than the equation, they have provided the data here. So for that, we need to use here the list and spreadsheets and the data is given X and Y. So X and here we will write Y. Now one, two, three, Four, three, four, five, and seven. Once you store your data, you need to go in a home and then they need to select the regression mode here. And now you need to select two variables x and y so x on x axis and here on y axis and then through this way you can able to get this line and now we need to find the line of best fit so this way you can able to get the line of regression where the gradient asks which is 1.3 and the y intercept would be 1.5. So any kind of the, when the data is provided, we can use this. And uh, also this feature is quite important because when the children are making the mathematical exploration, we encourage them to bring the data. If the data they are collecting through the experiments, that would be best. Otherwise they can, collect the data from the secondary sources, and then they can use this tool to find the line of regression and equation of line. So that's some important tool over here. Secondary thing, like in a quadratic, same, same feature, we will we can able to use here in the case of quadratics so quickly i will show you again when the data is provided we will have to go and here it is given that the uh, rocket is fire upward from the ground the height of the projectile above the ground is shown in the following table so we will be using here T and this is height zero point five one one point five two and two point five. So zero point five. Then twenty point five, thirty one point five, thirty six point two five, thirty point four one, and twenty two. After enter the data, then the home. So time on x-axis and height on the y-axis here. So then you will be getting the model function this. And as you require to find the model function regression and quadratic. So this way uh, we can able to make a quadratic regression, linear regression, etc. Now, uh, 
I'll take it the another part here where I will also demonstrate the calculus concept in this. So graph mode, uh, graph the following first and second derivative of the function on the graphic calculator. And then we need to see if exist. So whatever things exist, we will see here. So first thing we need to enter the equation, negative five X square minus four X minus nine. Now we need to change the, or we need to set window here. Now, one minute. Sir, uh, hello, Kevin, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Sir, the graph is plotted uh, in the minus y, uh, so on there. That is in the uh, third and the fourth quadrant. So, uh, yeah. So, you can change the uh, setting. The minus, uh, the y minimum should be hmm. min yeah, minus 30. Okay, this is going yeah. down. Yes. All right. Okay, okay. So here the case is uh, we have this quadratic equation and we need to find the coordinate of the stationary point. And the graph is quadratic and a stationary point would be the point to which is uh, vertex here. And we can see the vertex would be this here. So what exactly the coordinate of the vertex so we need to see the stationary point here, analyze graph. And we know that is the inverted parabola. So uh, there would be the maximum point on this. So we need to bring the cursor again here minus lower bound. And then we need to take the upper bound here. So you can see here, your this point is considered as your stationary point number one. And also this, point is considered as maximum point, which is the nature of a stationary point. Now through this, you can also work out it that the interval of increasing function would be less than negative 0 0.4 and your uh, decreasing part or uh, decreasing interval would be X is greater than negative 0 0.4 here. And then they are asking here the equation of tangent at the point x equals to minus one. So that I will show you. The point of inflection will not exist because there is no change in the curvature of the graph. So the thing is remain here, the tangent at x equals to minus one. So for that, we need to go in a geometry. On the point here. 
so we will click the point and then we will turn our point to minus 1 so this is the point x equals to minus 1 now again geometry the tangent we required the tangent at this point so this would be considered as the tangent line and the equation of tangent would be y equal to 6x minus 4 Up now, as we know that the gradient of this equation of tangent is positive, hence your curve would be increasing curve till x equals to minus zero point four. And if same manner, if you make a tangent here over the x equals to one. and then we will make a equation of tangent and here you can see the gradient is negative 14 so it is clearly indicated that the increasing part would be the part where x domain is less than minus 0.4 and the decreasing part of the curve would be where it is greater than minus 0.4 so through this way we can able to see the equation of tangent we can also see the interval of increasing and decreasing function stationary point and nature of a stationary point we can also draw the graph of derivative function here so this and then click you will find here x so this would be the derivative graph so as the graph is quadratic so derivative graph would be the linear here now we will be discussing some part where the point of inflection will exist and also we can able to see the global or local maxima or minima we can save this later as per our requirement we can retrieve this file so the question i am thinking to take here like number 3 where i can also discuss about the domain so we need to new and graph mode here sir i'm sorry to interrupt you please uh, if if any student have any any doubt uh, till here please uh, either they can uh, unmute themselves and they can ask or they can write uh, on chat box and they want uh, uh, pravin sir to uh, cover any specific uh, portion of of uh, mathematics or any any cover to cover any any particular portion so please also you can unmute yourself and just uh, let us know please so now here uh, equation we have entered now we need to enter the domain otherwise the graph will be there and that graph would be over the real number domain so we can put up here 
domain which is minus 2 So now you can see your cubic graph is this. Since we have defined the domain, that is why you are able to see the end point of this. And now we need to find the coordinates of the turning point. And the turning point would be the stationary point here. So analyze graph, minimum, So your minimum point coordinate would be this. So you can say that the stationary point is four here, x equals to four. And your maxima exists at the point. So you will have the two stationary point. One is x equals to zero and another is x equals to four here. So this way, the coordinates of stationary points are ready. Then uh, local, now the case here is, uh, we need to see the points they have given here, minus two comma five here. So the lowest point, and now you can see in this case, uh, when we talk about, uh, local maxima and minima. So local maxima and minima is existing here. Zero comma five, you have local maxima and four comma minus 27, you will have the local minima here. Now, and again, when the part of the increasing and decreasing, so you can say that when X value between minus two to zero, Again, I'll repeat x minus 2 to 0 and 4 to 5, your function is increasing while between 0 and 4, your function is decreasing. So there are the two parts where the function is increasing. One is minus 2 comma 0 and second is 4 comma 5 and your function is decreasing between zero and four. And uh, another thing here is the lowest point of the curve means the lowest value of the Y is at the uh, four comma minus 27. So hence your, this point will also consider as your global minima and your point is 0 comma 4 because that is 0 comma 5 that is the highest point and highest value of y so this point will consider as your global so i think that all these points we discussed the last thing is remain here since the curve is changing so that is why your point of inflection will exist on this place so with the help of this analyze graph tool we can find the point of inflection and we know, of course, it will exist between the maxima and minima. So we need to bring the point here. And then you can see the point of inflection is existing at the point x equals to 2. So these are the concepts, which is the part of your differentiation and the properties of the curve, which we can able to get it through the curve only here.
the another feature through the graph we can see that is the area under the curve and area between the curve so that would be the application of your integration so suppose if we consider the curve root x and we need to find the area between x equals to 1 and x equals to 9 so what we need to do we need to take the menu analyze graph and we need to see the integral now as i as i said we need to find the area between x equals to 1 so this is the point where x equals to 1 and consider the lower limit here we are calling the lower bound click it now you can see your area it is written zero upper bound and we need to drag it to the nine here so as you will drag it to nine you will find the area under the curve between 1 and 9 is 17.6 is come this thing you can also do uh, with the calculator mode also like uh, if you go in calculator mode here then click this you will see here the integration is given here click this your limit is 1 here limit is 9 and here the function is root x dx so when you enter you will be getting answer 52 by 3 and if you want the decimal value of this number convert to decimal here so 17.333 it is coming maybe in a graph little bit in a, it could be this and that so that is why some kind of the decimal variation could be possible otherwise you can able to work out through this this is the case of when we are discussing the area under the curve now if we discuss the area between the curve so you know that we need to take here two equations and then we will find out this here so the equation i'll be taking here x plus two and uh, my graph suppose if i am taking uh, x square and i want area between the line and the curve menu analyze graph here you need to take because we are discussing two things two graphs are given the area bound, bounded area we will take it now here it will give you this because it is written area bounded might not work as expected in the complex number format remember we made the some changes in our setting for finding the quad uh, complex so we need to go again change the setting here and rectangular we will make it real and okay here so this setting is required and uh, we will proceed to we need to retrieve this document otherwise we will have to retype this so this is uh, the place where my documents are stored i am looking for document number i don't remember let us check yes four number so now menu analyze graph 
and then you need to take it from the this part and you need to drag it as you will drag it you will get the area which is 4.51 same manner we can able to do with the calculator mode but we didn't see the limits so we need to calculate limit and we need to substitute here and then we need to work out that way so surely you can able to find the area between the curve by the graphic method or by the calculation method and these are the functions of exponential functions you can easily able to sketch that and log also you can able to sketch by using the graph tool that is uh, your uh, reciprocal functions or your rational functions the another important thing which is also newly introduced in our syllabus that is a logistic function earlier this function was not with the part of the syllabus but now it is in the our curriculum so we need to see what type of the graph we can able to see through this so like uh, one of the function like 72 upon 1 plus so the kind of the graph you will be getting this and uh, so this type of the logistic graph here and mainly the logistic function we will be getting when we are doing the mo uh, modeling of the data of related with the population so and uh, in one of the ia uh, long back is around 2011 when they discuss about the china population so that time we got this kind of the curve in that case and uh, the question here is uh, solve the logistic growth here so the the growth rate would be your uh, minus 5 here and uh, the function you will be getting this if the question comes solve this so like one of the graph is this and another thing after the equal sign is written 9 so you can write here and the solution would be the intersection of this so you can get the value of x equals to 0.11 here so such kind of the questions we can able to do this like uh, one of the question i have taken here when the data is given and uh, how we can able to model the logistic function so that i will quickly show you so new list and spreadsheet this is a uh, time and here is var log so i will take as a variable then we need to store the values here 
सिक्स इलेवन सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी सिक्स थर्टी वन थर्टी सिक्स सेवन ट्वेल्व ट्वेंटी वन थर्टी वन थर्टी नाइन फोर्टी थ्री फोर्टी फाइव एंड फोर्टी सिक्स मेन्यू सो नाउ यू गो इन दिस so the graph trend is shows that kind of exponential graph here so this way you can able to make the logistic function so sometime the question used to come here what would be the upper Value over here, or you can say maximum value over here. So that way we can analyze the graph with the help of the function, and we can able to give the answers of this here. Now the one interesting thing I like to show you that the real life image modeling, and really this is a quite interesting feature. so for that uh, i will just uh, start you need to take select your graph tool then you can see here this is a insert and listen uh, this feature is only when you can able to do when you work with the calculator software you need to select the image this image is already with me and whatever image you want you can select accordingly as you will open here your image will come on the graph then now we need to drag our image this way so that the origin can come over here what exactly i am trying to do the curve you can see in the figure i am just trying to make the model function for this this curve so once your the set here you need to go in a menu geometry points and you need to put up one point on exactly on a curve as much as accurately you will put up and give the coordinates of this as properly you you will put up your points on the curve your equation will come perfect now select store type here x enter as you will do this you will find that this is coming dark same manner you need to make it for point of y all right now you need to go on this here 
you type x list y list go on a dead data capture and manual and here you need to type x enter similarly you go on y right click data capture or manual enter now you need to press control and dot when you press control and dot you will find that your the coordinates will come automatically here just a minute now i will drag my point on a curve as i said ki as much as i will keep it close to the curve and control so your data point is recorded again bring control dot this feature is really very useful while you are doing modeling of real image as much as point you will take on this curve your all data will record so you can see your all the data points are captured over here now we need to find the regression function so on now you will see your all data points are available here on x axis and on y axis as i said ki as much as way you will put up your curve your uh, drag your point your your curve will smooth curve we can get it regression line as you can see kind of quadratic so you can select this and then this way you can able to get the function so this is a quite important model function a uh, feature of this calculator you can use it you can try with this kind of the functions are also available now uh, i'll take you the certain important thing here because now we are going to discuss the last unit here 
that is the statistics and uh, probability and uh, as uh, ma'am also said ki you are using this uh, earlier also so is not a new so i will try to explain you or discuss with you the important feature of statistics or new feature of the statistics in this so here the first part the first thing you can see here this is only the statistics part where you enter your data and then you can get the mean median mode the second feature of this one is the binomial normal and uh, uh, poisson and normal distribution where we need to find out or we need to calculate the probability here so particularly when we are discussing the model functions so we will be using the calculator mode here say for example if we are looking for x distributed as binomial with the uh, n is 6 and uh, probability p is uh, 0.35 and we are looking for the probability greater than 3 so there are the three ways uh, two ways you can do it either you can go with that less than 3 uh, 1 minus less than 3 or so we will be using that tool here calculate menu probability distribution and then binomial cdf we will be using see one thing here when we have the range like uh, uh, greater than or less than then we will be using cdf and if we are using direct exact value when word is coming exact then you will have to use the pdf here so number of tries is already given 6 probability of success that is uh, 0.35 then they are saying lower bound is 0 here and greater than 3 they are asking so we can write here uh as i said ki you can type here directly like uh, lower bound as a 3 and because we can't write here infinity so you can use directly plus 3 9 here and then it will give you the probability of this if you are looking for 1 Minus then for zero till two you will have to work out and then one minus so then you can able to get the probability. So this is the way you can use the distributions here. And similarly, when you will see here distributions, oh sorry, then as per our syllabus, normal. distribution you will be having then binomial and poisson distribution you will have and then kind of the word problems so also you can able to work out now i just want to discuss the main important feature of this that is the confidence interval which is uh, recently introduced in the our syllabus earlier it was in the optional part now it is the core part but again i will remind you this is only in the ai this is not in aa uh, aa part you will have till i think normal distribution so normal distribution let us just take any one of the problem of normal also so like uh, same manner probability distributions and normal cdf so like uh, they are asking lower bound and upper bound so you can put up 70 upper bound would be 74 and a uh, mu value is given 70 here and uh, the sigma is your 4 and then you can directly get the normal 
and uh, because uh, in our uh, syllabus that we do not have the normal distribution table so that is why we are allowed to use this calculator and through that only we need to calculate the probabilities so now as i said ki the important feature that finding the confidence interval uh, we need to see so the question here is uh, uh, population mean with the known variance for the large sample so z test for the mean of the population with the known variance and the question here is a sample of 60 yabies was taken from a dam a sample mean weight of the yabies was 84.6 so given the population standard deviation uh, 16.8 grams construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean here so we need to go menu then we need to go in statistics confidence interval z interval here now they are saying data or stats so data when the data is there then you will have the data would be given like in the next the next to next question and when we discuss t test and here we have the stats given here so we click on stats okay now they want the sigma value sigma is already given 16.8 your x bar mean they have given you here this is 84.6 your sample size is 60 here so and they are looking for 95 percent confidence interval so you can click here and then you can able to get here your 80.34 and 88.85 so this way you can able to find out the confidence interval this is the case when the sample size is large so we are using the z test And the secondary thing is when we are using, we have a small sample size. So like I will demonstrate one more question here. The T test for the mean of population with the known variance, the height in meter of the random sample of six placement from a particular station or as follows. Assuming that the height of the policeman from and that station are normally distributed with the mean mu calculate a 95% confidence interval so menu then uh, statistics confidence interval t test and here we have the data given so what we need to do we need to uh, first we need to add the data here we will make it here variable x and then the weight data given 1.80 then 1.79 then 1 1.76 1.81 1.83 1.79 so this, this way your data is stored here now Just one minute.
so uh, we enter first we enter data then we need to go in menu then statistics then confidence interval then t interval here okay now you can type here x okay 95% so here we are looking for this and now when you click this because the interval is again 95 so you can change it also as per the calculation and click ok here so now you can see here your uh, confidence interval the lower part would be one point you no know, something is i think something is missing in this just one minute This is X, this is one, this is ninety. Okay. Mm. So the value is supposed to come. Just a minute, let me. Maybe somewhere typing mistake in the answer here. Yeah, just give me one second. I just see the second question 3 3.6, 3.9, 4.5, 3.8, 4.4, 4.9, 4.2, and 3.8. Yeah. Menu statistics confidence interval D interval here data X Three point six, three point nine, four point nine, three point eight, four point four, four point nine, four point two, three point eight. So number of values are eight here. So the confidence interval is coming three point seven six and three point four, uh, four point five. Sir, uh, it should be 99%, I guess. We have entered for the 95% confidence while entering the video. This one, just a minute. Okay, we can do that. Menu. Statistics, confidence, interval. Interval, data. Yes, yes, maybe this could be. And here we can type ninety nine. Yes, point nine. All right. Now yeah. you can see exactly. here exactly the three point five nine and three point six eight. You can get it. So this way we can able to get the confidence interval by using the Z test and by using the T test.
I guess we can take uh, one one last question, and we can wind up this session because. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the next uh, thing we can able to take it here the hypothesis testing, and uh, in the hypothesis testing, of course, actually, again that will be the t test, and then. Sir, can the can you show one uh, algebra question? Uh, Possible any any one algebra application. Algebra question of uh, which topic? I mean, so exam exam oriented. Some, uh, so yeah. could you show one for sum of a series? Sum of series. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, just one minute. Mm. Like uh, So just simple how to use sigma notation from n to some constant k. Yes, yes, it's coming, coming, coming on that point only. I'm just thinking from like uh, this type of the notation we are using for that. And uh, here, like you can write, suppose, uh, and just like some of the, uh, even I, I would say the sum of the natural numbers. So some of the natural number, like n equals to one to say 10. So this is the sum of uh, first 10 natural number, uh, we are doing it. So this way you can able to find out. And uh, also if it is the case, uh, suppose if I don't want to type this thing again, I want to edit this. So you need to bring your cursor here and then press enter. And if you are looking for sum of squares, we can able to get it or the third thing is if you have the general term of any series uh, any sequence and through that also you can able to get it here so in this case directly you need to apply the sigma notation and then uh, your here between the bracket you need to write the general term and then uh, as I have written it, written here, the general term is n square, and uh, you can find the sum of first ten uh, square of natural numbers. So, or if you have particularly the series, uh, just a minute. Say the series is uh, even number series, or uh, like a series like eight, eleven, fourteen, seventeen. Uh, I'm just saying that. So, like uh, so, general term. First, we need to see, and then you can able to find the sum here, like this, a eight, uh, <clears throat> just a minute. So that is a eight plus seven. Minus. 
So you can write here five minus three n. So five minus three n. And then uh, if you want the sum of this till 10 terms, so you can enter this and then you can able to get it this here. So just a minute, this would be plus. So then and that will give you the sum of the series here. Like that formula, like in an arithmetic sequence, the two formulas we are using a plus n minus one into t for general term. And then you can able to use here that some functions formula by n by two. So two a plus n minus one into t. Whatever you are using, you accordingly, you can able to get the sum of the series. And, uh, but, but for that, you need to use here the general function here. In fact, we can also sometime get the series, the quadratic series also, if you are uh, aware of that in uh, IGCSC, you will have the linear series and the cubic series as well uh, and uh, quadratic. So in that case, we can able to use uh, this from uh, sigma notation. Sometimes the problem used to come in a paper where we need to simplify this and then we need to calculate it. So that will be the procedure we need to use in a manual manner. We can able to make a graph also. So like graph in a sense, ki, uh, if you have the same sequence uh, here, like uh, five plus three N, so you can use uh table and this is you can write here n and this is you can write here tn and then if you consider first term second term third term fourth term five term and fifth term and then the first number suppose is uh, eight then the second number is uh, 11 and then 14 and then 17. Okay. And uh, similarly, you can able to find for uh, this. Uh, and uh, you can make a graph of this. So, So like this is the arithmetic series. So that is why you are getting the linear graph. While if you take the geometric series, then you will be getting the exponential graph here. You can also establish the relationship between them. Uh, like, uh, but certain work you need to do manually here and then you can able to work out through the calculator only the graph or the All right, sir. Thank you. Uh, if anybody has any, any doubts to uh, ask, or uh, will we wind up this session here also? If anybody has anything to ask, please please. Yeah. Permutation combination also directly direct functions are here through that PNC and uh, that you can able to find out. Those functions are available here, factorial permutation and combination. So these features are available in this. Thank you so much. I guess we can we can wind up uh, the session here. Sure, sure. sure. Yes, uh, that was uh, good to hear you. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us. And it's always a pleasure to uh, have you as a
family member there is a lot to learn obviously you can we can't learn everything of in any way should duration there is a lot to learn also so from here only yeah so, so if anybody want to know further about the 